All right, welcome. My name is Brian Bowser. I'm a developer on the Pulp team. Um, I work at Red Hat, which is a really great place to work. I super enjoy it. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about how to add telemetry metrics. Um, this is going to be kind of a, a live coding session, but it really should be called a live copy paste session because in putting this uh, presentation together, there are a lot of details. And so I don't want to waste your time. Uh, so um, some, if it doesn't go super perfect, then I'm going to refer to the copy that I already have. Um, the first thing to know is that this is about sending data from pulp installations to um, the website analytics.pulpproject.org. Um, we've been calling this uh, telemetry, but um, what it really should be called is analytics. Um, of course, with Daniel's talk just a moment ago about actual telemetry, that's the real, um, that's the real telemetry. So this is really about analytics. As you can see here, what this site does is it gathers installations about um, information about uh, what plugins are being run and how many installations there are, different various versions. Um, there's some charts at the bottom that talk about, uh, you know, content app and kind of online workers. This is this is a metric kind of, of like how large the installations are, and then some metrics about how old installations are, like how long lived um, they are. So you can go see uh, what is out there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to add a new metric end to end. So that includes pulp core submitting the data, the telemetry site saving the data, summarizing the data, and then visualizing the data. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Please stop and ask questions along the way. Um, it's clear for you and more fun for me. So if you want to add a metric, uh, the first thing you have to do is write a proposal. Um, the proposal process was put together by um, the working group uh, of folks um, who helped get this project going. And what you would do is you would go to HackMD. Um, there's the link here. There's a link. This link's in a couple places. And you'll fill out a proposal which has these kinds of questions. Um, the proposal process is important because it tries to answer the, all the questions you're going to have to answer throughout the process all up front, and it avoids a lot of time wasted when you do things that, um, you know, other people say like, oh, well, I thought the graph would look differently, or, hey, I'm not comfortable with this piece of data being collected or represented this way, or is this really accurate? Is it is it even useful? Um, is it going to have negative impacts on our, our, our user performance? Um, is it truly anonymous? So you'll see those those, this is what the proposal process is designed to, to do. So what we're going to do is look at the proposal for, well, sorry, after you write the proposal, you discuss it by posting in the working group discourse thread. So there's this telemetry long um, discourse thread, and you can just link to your proposal there. Uh, and then you write the code and um, after you know, I had a discussion with the working group, it kind of in the proposal gets marked as whether it's been accepted or not. And if it's been accepted, then you write the code. Um, in this case, uh, I have already written the proposal and it's a proposal to add a PostgreSQL server version as, as the metric to be collected. And um, then this has also been discussed and um, approved here at the bottom by the folks in the working group. So we kind of already did those steps here, but those are very important steps. So uh, what question is this going to help? We're going to go through this proposal so we have a clear idea of what this part's like. Um, if I think this is as important or more important than the actual code, so we're going to really go through it. Um, what is it going to help us answer? Well, it's going to help us answer what's the distribution of our users um, of PostgreSQL servers in use. Um, it also, for example, if we decide to upgrade the minimum database version, what percentage of our uh, analytics users would be affected by that? Um, so those, those are the questions we want to have you know, help answer. Um, what does this data look like? Well, you can see a, an example of the data structure here. Um, how will it be gathered? It's going to be gathered at runtime. Um, runtime metrics are good because they don't require a lot of database stuff on Pulp to save that data over time. Um, and it'll be easy to collect, uh, so it won't cause negative load on Pulp because you can just ask the server, hey, what's your version? Um, it is not personally identifiable. It's just the version number. 
Um, we don't need to sanitize it because it's very generic and not personally identifiable. Uh, we're proposing this be included in pulp core 3.22. Um, we didn't have any other alternative proposals. Um, and how will summarization look? So this is an important one because what happens is each system posts a metric like this individually, and then every day on the server side of the telemetry site, a summarization job runs. Um, it's a management command to Django and it says summarize and it produces what's called a daily summary. And that summary summarizes all systems that have posted their data, which would include this metric in the last 24 hours. And so it's an aggregating, it's an aggregating data structure here. And um, so it would say it's keyed on PostgreSQL version. It's got an entry for each of the versions. Um, this actually says unknown in mine. I, I wrote this as none, so I didn't really adhere to the proposal I see, I see now. Um, so I need to go change that. But um, this is like one of those details that came up in the review process. Like, well, are we capturing when we don't know the version? And that was a suggestion and it was incorporated here. And then, uh, so this is the summarization data structure we're gonna produce. And then we need to talk about visualization. So we um, decided on a pie chart. Um, the pie charts in the charting library, which is chart.js look like this. And that's how we're gonna represent it. It's not time series historical information. It's only gonna ever show, um, be visualizing last night's summary. So it's kind of always the most recent snapshot. Um, there was some debate about whether that was good or not, um, but that's ultimately what we settled on. It makes sense to me. <laughs> um, yeah. That's what we are interested in now, right? Like, what are what of the existing systems out there? What databases are being used? Yes, um, and it was also convenient for me for this demo because um, it keeps it pretty simple versus having to render in a chart a time series history of data. You can just look at one daily summary point and, summer and visualize that. So let's get down to it. Um, if I can find my charts or my stuff. Um, so in the writing the code part, what you want to do, it's kind of three steps. You want to do the data submission. So that stuff happens in pulp core. You want to um, and save it on the server side. Uh, that happens on the telemetry repository. You want to perform summarization. That's a management command that runs on the server side. So that's a pretty distinct thing. And then you want to perform visualization. So we're going to do three steps today. And you might go into this later, but the management command man that runs on the server side of the analytics site, is that like a cron job that runs? It is a cron job. It is a um, OpenShift based service job, which I don't know the technical name for it, but it's basically a cron job that runs on OpenShift. Cool. Um, these sites are hosted on OpenShift and it runs every 24 hours or so. Um, and by, just, just for clarity here, by server side, in this context, we're talking about the analytics server, not the pulp server. That's right. That's, that's exactly correct. And this language cool. is confusing because we tend to use server meaning a pulp server. Um, in this case, pulp the pulp um, installation is the client because it is yep. performing the data submission. But thank you. Exactly right. That. Um, cool. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I will try to be clear as, uh, as well, but thank you. That's really great. Um, so the data submission, um, what you need to do to do data submission is you add a definition to the telemetry proto protocol buffer, which is kind of shortened here called proto buff um, definition. So if you don't know about protocol buffers, go, go read about them. Apparently, I don't know how um, uh, this charting stuff works. So, um, or this uh, presentation text works. Uh, so here's a protocol, protocol buffer definition. Um, the real quick rundown is um, protocol buffers is a technology that was originally created at Google. You can see a website about it here. Um, its goals are to um, represent a structured piece of data um, in a way that is language agnostic and provides really easy um, well, validation of that data, but also with a special mind towards forward and backwards compatibility. So um, we'll see an example of exactly what we mean there, but there's, um, there's our Python bindings effectively for protobuf um, and um, you take a protobuf definition. Well, we can look at ours actually. 
um, you take a definition here and uh, it compiles into a Python module and then you can just import that module and use it and it provides validation and things like that. And that produces um, data that you can then, that pulp core will then post to the server. And this definition is included on both the server and the client. And so it kind of provides this serialization and deserialization um, uh, mechanism. So this is what telemetry looks like today before we extend it. So um, it says my whole, my whole message is a thing called telemetry and I have a required string called a system ID. Then there's this sub message called an online content app. It's got pro a process and a host, um, but that's just an, a concept of a message. We're defining on line 13 here that um, you optionally can have optional being zero or many um, online content apps. And you might, and you see these equal signs, you might think these are value assignments. They're not, they're actually the message number assignments in the the way the the data pack the binary pack format is and so they don't have to be sequential um but they do have to be unique so we're saying system id is message um you know space number one online content apps however many there are are all in space number two um, inside that message processes in space number one posts in space number two that's inside this message same for online workers same for the components. These are like the version. These are like the um, the plugin software that you have installed. Like I have pulp file. It's at version this. I have pulp core. It's at version that. Um, and then we have some number of those components. So the first thing that you want to do when you're adding a new metric is include that metric in the data format that's being that's being uh, made there. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so uh, this is not a great tool. Um, let's go find the right thing. Telemetry. All right, so um, over here, and I'll make this big in a second. So in the um, analytics.pulproject.org repo, that's where we keep the definitions here. So here's the telemetry proto definition and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, say, well, we want another message. Um, and uh, this, you know, in the way that I built this before, it um, it was a sub message, but it, it really didn't have to be. And I'm just going to do it the way that I did it before, but it's not great. Um, I realize now that... Uh, you know, I didn't really have to make a sub message here. Um, so I have a string, um, which is the, uh, we'll call this the version. And then I have a u in 32 because it's a number. Um, uh, all right, see, I already have to refer to my notes here. What am I doing? Uh, this is in here. Do, do, do. Find the protobuf section. Yeah. Oh no, I did do this right. Yeah, this is I don't, I I am misremembering the part where we do the summarization. Um. So, uh, this is good. So it's actually going to be like this. Um. We're saying that uh, there's an optional string called PostgreSQL version, and it's number five in the message pack. It's number five because I put it outside the thing here. Um, it's number five because um, it's right after number four. Again, they don't have to be sequential. There's some reasons why you might want to leave gaps. That's for you to read about in the protobuf stuff, um, but I'm calling it number five. It's optional because everything that you add to protobuf has to be optional. Um, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it's supposed to be because this is what allows protobuf to have forward and backwards compatibility. Um, by marking it as optional, you could, like, you could have old pulp core installations, for example, 
I mean, it's important because you can have uh, previous versions earlier than 3.22. They're not using this in their messages they're submitting. They um, don't have it. And so if I mark this as required, and this is what's also used on the server side, when it receives messages from older systems, it's going to be like, it's going to fail. It's going to be like, uh, where's this required thing? So this is an important part for forward backwards compatibility option. That's cool. Uh, so then here, um, so that's all you got to do for that. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is compile it um, and save it into both pulp core and the telemetry repositories because this is a shared definition. This is one thing we're going to improve. We're going to actually break out these things into their own Python library that's on PyPy and then just have these projects depend on them. But for today, you actually have to copy the code. Um, so let's go uh, and do the def do the um, compilation here. And these this would still be very specific to pulp, right? These libraries. Uh, the yes, Breaking they are. Out. They are. They are a. Py you can think of them just like a Python binding that is built specifically from the message definition. And since that message definition is specifically for pulp, these bindings would be specific to pulp. Cool. Um, so I, uh, you can just DNF proto buff, um, and so I already have that on my system here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this source directory. These are the same kinds of commands you'll see in the protobuf documentation. Um, so I'm saying, hey, my source files are, are over here. Um, I'm going to export the destination directory, um, which I'm going to put them into the pulp analytics folder, which is the area where we keep the stuff inside the repository. Um, and then I'm going to actually run this proto C command, which is the protobuf compile. And it says, this is my source. I'm using Python out, so I'm I could produce like Go bindings or Ruby or whatever with other options here, but I'm telling it Python stuff. And um, I want the telemetry um, proto file. So it just wrote those files out. Um, you can see those if you look, uh, let's see. So if you look in the git diff, you can see what it produced. So we don't care about this stuff because it's not what, what we like protobuf handles all this stuff. Um, but these are the changes that come when you recompile it with that one particular change and you can see my one change. here. Um, so then what we need to do is we need to copy this file to pulp core because um, this is the built version, right? So it's Pulp Analytics. It's this here, telemetry.pb. Um, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go down to Pulp Core. This is the thing that we're going to do better in the future. Um, pulp Core. Pulp Core keeps them inside um, the app. And then this protobuf area. So you can see there's already a telemetry pb2 there. We're just going to paste it. Um, we're going to overwrite it. So now the latest version is also there too. Um, I'm actually going to do the server side uh, first for Pulp Analytics because this actually is a nice simulation of Pulp Core, of an older version of Pulp Core submitting data. Um, and we'll save that data point and then we'll write the client side and then have it submit. And then um, we will kind of be able to simulate both scenarios just by doing it in that order, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, so what we're going to do is go into the telemetry area and then I'll make it big again. Um, and the, this is a really simple Django project. It has this views.py and the telemetry data is accepted with, um, with this single post view at the bottom. And you can see here that it's, it's imported telemetry from the protobuf definition and it parses, it says telemetry protobuf, here's a string that you, that should be parsable by you, do the parsing. And then you should take this and hand it to all these different functions, which create database objects on the server side and basically save it in a structured way. Um, so that reminds me that what we need to do is go create a model definition for this. So let's go create a model definition. Um, these are 
the models that we have today. So there's a system that stores a system ID. There's a component that stores like names and versions, and they foreign key back to the system. The data model on the server side is kind of there's a system, and all the data, all the other data relates foreign key back to that system. So we're going to basically do um, the same thing uh, here. So um, I'm going to uh, again use the copy pasta. Uh, Let's see, that's not my PR. Um, this is my PR. And you can see, if you look in the models, um, these are the migrations that we're going to make. Yeah, so here's the model that we're going to use. Um, it's, uh, we can just put it here. And can make it big. So this is going to store on the telemetry side the PostgreSQL version. Um, it's going to have a version text field, and it's going to foreign key back to the system that posted it. Um, each day when um, a system posts every 24 hours, which is how it works in the pull core code, um, a new system entry is created, and a new one of these will be created. And uh, then here's just some helper stuff to be able to print it out. Uh, so let's go ahead and make our migrations. Um, to do that, uh, we're going to first set up a dev site. The dev site is something I'm going to take through setting up because if you're going to do this, that's something you're going to have to do. We've tried to make it pretty easy, but we absolutely want to make this a profile for the OCIM um, because it would actually be a lot easier and just better. But um, setting up a dev site is pretty simple. You just um, you make a virtual env. I already did that. You clone the project and pip install the requirements. I already did that. And then you start the database. And uh, we're using a container for our database. So it's just the normal Postgres podman pull. Um, and then we're going to start the database with this, um, with this command here. Uh, OK, so my database is running. And we can see that it is running if we connect to it. Uh, and we can see um, that it's empty. If we look, oh, there's nothing in this database. OK, fine. Um, the next thing you have to do is you have to set the app key. This is basically the Django secret key. And Django is going to complain at you if you don't do this. Um, so. Now we have a secret key making our Django installation valid. Normally, you would uh, run the migrations next. But in, um, in this case, I actually want to make a migration. Uh, so it made my migration for model 5, for migration 5 for PostgreSQL. Uh, then let's migrate. And now you can see everything's been applied, including my new um, definition here. Uh, you could go look at the database, but for the sake of time, I won't. Uh, also, we the site uses the admin site. It's, we're going to use it today, and it's really useful. So, I'm going to make a um, just a super user here so that I can log into it. So I made a super user, and then um, you can run run it with run server. I'm going to actually run it on all interfaces because I need it to be able to accept postings from the dev environment, which is running inside the OCIM. Uh, inside the, from pulp core, which is running inside the OCIM. And so I needed to listen on all interfaces. This is one thing in particular that would just be better if we had it as a profile. Because like uh, David Newswinger showed yesterday, you can refer to other containers with the profiles at, by host name. So this would just be really slick if, if it was also an OCIM based thing. Um, so at this point, you have a dev environment and you can see a few things. Uh, one, you can see that the page loads with graphs that are just totally empty. Um, the other thing you can see is that there's an admin site, uh, which I can log into. And uh, it has a user, and it's got these things. It's got um, a system, an online worker, online content apps, a component. And then this is the daily summary. This is the thing that the summer, summarize command runs. Um, but you'll notice the PostgreSQL one isn't here. Um, hmm, we should make sure that it's added here. And to do that uh, quickly and easily, 
we're going to add its definition to, I believe I saw it up here, into admin.py. So um, I had to change the format of this. So in Pulp Analytics, there's this admin.py. Um, and uh, I made it like this, which is the same import, only now it has this PostgreSQL from the model layer. And then um, we'll go ahead and register uh, this PostgreSQL here. And uh, the great thing about the this site is that it does um, code reloading. Hopefully it's going to be doing that for me. Hmm. There we go. Uh, so now we have PostgreSQL versions here. We don't have any because we don't have any systems. Um, and even if our system is posted right now, we don't have any code that handles the saving of these models. This is the server side on the telemetry site. Um, so let's go ahead and add that. So the place that that gets added is um, kind of where I started a few minutes ago. This is not the right file. This presenter mode is not very helpful. Um, so in the view area, so I can show it to you here. So in, in analytics.pulpproject.org, there's the app here, which is Pulp Analytics. That's the Django app where all the stuff is. There's this views.py and uh, this is where we're going to be doing the, the stuff. So what we want to do here is while we're saving all these other things, like we save a system, we save these components, things like that. We're going to, we're going to also save, um, a, uh, this PostgreSQL data that's been sent to us. Um, I am going to do the copy pasta stuff here. Um, because it's just a lot to try to do this in the way otherwise. Um, let's see, do, do, do. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna call this new function I'm gonna make called save PostgreSQL version. Um, I'm going to uh, make that here, which is gonna happen um, just under save online workers. Um, and I didn't import it correctly, so I should go and do that. Um, yeah, so, uh, what you see here is, um, it's going to get called for each system that's posting. It's going to get called. It's going to say, let me get the version out of the telemetry protobuf definition. It's attribute based. That's another nice thing about protobuf. Um, so this is the version string and I'm going to say, I'm going to create one and I'm going to relate it to the system, which is being passed into me because it was already created and I'm going to save the version here. So at this point, um, the server side, uh, or the server stuff reloads. Um, I haven't made any changes to pulp core. I, um, I did give it, it's not true. I did, I did give it, um, I did give it the new protobuf definition. Yeah. Um, but but you're not using it though, right? I'm not using it, but I want to make a great demo. Um, okay. So you can see here that pulp core is um, just a generic checkout from the head of what's on GitHub. Um, so let's go ahead and um, bring our OCI item down. Uh, we're going to bring it up. For some reason, this takes longer to boot than it used to. I don't know why. But there is, it probably takes like a whole minute um, for it to boot. Like it seems like it waits here for a long time. So, what we're going to basically do is just let this run and it's going to post and save on the server side. So, um, yeah, I think it's generating um, cert. And from my memory of just whenever I generate SSH certs, um, it, there's a moment where it's looking for system randomness. <laughs> um, and it will, uh, depending on how busy your system is, will take 
a certain amount of time. That's fine. Um, well, what I'm saying is that that's we should probably improve that cert generation stuff. Yeah, um, it didn't. It generated certs before, and it didn't have that problem. Then I don't know. Um, okay, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. So while that's running, um, we can go ahead and work on the um, summarization part. So the summarization part um, is also a protobuf definition. So let's go look at that. Um, do, do, do. Uh, that's not right. That's the build version. Here's the summary for protobuf. So um, the way this works is that you have a single message, which is summary. It says, so again, this is a summarization of n systems over the last 24 hours. And so there's aggregation that's happening here. So if you have, you know, what are you going to say for the number of online content apps for those n systems? Well, we're going to save the averages. Um, and what are you going to say about the workers? Well, we're going to talk about the number of process and host averages. What will you say for the number of X, Y and X, Y, Z components? Well, we're going to say that there's a, a name, a version, and a count. Um, and the count here is the aggregating metric. So there's like 27 of these and four of those. Um, so this, and then there's some age statistics here as well. So when you want to go do the summarization stuff, this is what you need to um, add to. So the summarization that we're going to do is uh, this. So there's the PostgreSQL version, which is a message itself. And this is the part that I thought maybe I could do differently. Um, I don't need many of them. I just need exactly one. So I think I did this incorrectly. Um, and so, but this is what I did in my other code and my other code is compliant with this. So I'll, I can rework this later, but um, you know, slightly not making the most sense as it is. Um, this says, here's a message it's called PostgreSQL version. It stores a version and it stores a count. And I'm going to instantiate that message as a repeated message. This is the part that especially makes no sense. Um, I'm going to call it message number six because the previous message is number five. Um, again, they don't have to be sequential, but that's they do have to be unique. Um, so that is the proto, that's the version that's saved. And this, this data structure is saved in the database using something Matthias created, um, which by the way, huge, huge shout out to Matthias for a lot of the things that you're seeing here is his work. Um, and uh, it's just been phenomenal. So I do want to show you this real fast. So if you go look at the models, um, so daily summary is the is the main thing that you're doing for summarization. Um, it has a date and it has a summary and it has this thing called protobuf field, which Matthias made. And this allows you to take a protobuf and just attach it directly to the model and Django does the rest. So it saves and it loads and it handles the serialization in both ways. Um, so that's a really nice thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so let's go see how this did. Hopefully the demo gods are with me and they are. Um, you can see that it submitted telemetry. Oh man, it submitted telemetry to the wrong site. <laughs> um, cool, so I just submitted telemetry to the real site because um, I forgot to do some things, so that's fine. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this down one more time, and we're going to put in a few little things. So one thing is um, I am going to make a change to the pulp core code. Um, so the pulp core code is here. Uh, so pulp core inside here, inside the app. It's probably hard to read, so I'll say it. Um, inside the app, then there is the tasks area and there's a telemetry section inside of tasks and in here is this production and dev url site and what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell it to submit to my container instead 
So I'm just going to overwrite this by saying use my container. And this is a Podman thing that says submit it to my host system. My dev environment is actually running on my host system outside the container. So this is what um, you use to tell Pulp, hey, submit it to my host system. Um, and that is uh, what we're going to use as we then up um, here and let this thing do its thing once more. All right, it's doing its thing here. Um, this is still running, but I need to show you, I'm going to try to kind of beat it to the, to the punch here. Um, I want summarization to happen as if the system came in yesterday. And so I'm going to put this little hack in here, which I don't have a good way of, of doing this otherwise. Um, I'm going to make sure this kind of got redeployed. Um, so this is a, um, a development hack that I use often, which says, um, take the system created time, like make the system, but then I want you to subtract two days from its created time so that it adds as if it came in two days ago. Because the way summarization works is um, it summarizes yesterday into the daily summary. So if you run daily summary and all you have is a system from today, then it won't summarize because it's it, according to summarization, there's no data from yesterday for me to summarize. So this is an important detail to allow you to um, do this. What would be really nice is if you could edit these things right from the admin interface, but because of the way the field is defined, you can't. And that would be an improvement, but this is a nice little hack that I use. For, well, nice is probably an overstatement um, to do that. So let's um, go see if this works too. Uh, it's running the migrations now, so we still got a minute here. Um, there's one more setting that you that I had to deal with, but hopefully we'll merge this and you won't have to. Um, so on the server side site here in the app in its settings file, um, there are these settings which deal with this thing called pulp deployment. So um, the production environment sets this value to production. This lets us set settings just for the production site. This is kind of like a feature flipping idiom. Um, the dev site gets these site gets this set here, and then if you're none of those and you're probably in a local development environment and you get these settings, um, I need for summarization. I need the number. Um, I need this number to be zero. And what this is is um, the 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 systems that are considered ready for summarization even if they were posted yesterday, are only systems that have been around for a certain number of days. So basically, this is a solution to the problem. The problem being um, we had like on the, we only want to really track systems that are long lived. And our CIs, like the zillion CIs, are starting pulp systems all the time. Those pulp systems are really short lived and they are making the data quality really low because um, they're all posting to them, they're all posting analytics as if they're actual long load systems, but they're not. So we still collect and save that data. But when we go to summarize data, we're only going to actually look for systems that have been around for n number of days. And this is a setting that you can set because um, we want the dev site to show us all the systems. Otherwise, this the dev site won't be very valuable. The production side, on the other hand, we only want to show systems that have checked in at least twice. So that would be, you know, once in a 24 hour period and again in a 24 hour period. So I need for this demo, the system I'm, the systems that I'm showing you generate a system um, ID and post it. And they only do that exactly once because I'd have to leave it running for 24 hours to get a second one. And so I need this to be zero. I think this should be the dev default, and that's why you probably won't have to deal with this. But it's a detail that I had to talk about here to be accurate. Any any questions on that? That's pretty pretty complicated.
All right, so um, we can now see that we submitted telemetry to this site. Um, notice it doesn't have anything about Postgres in here because we didn't add anything yet. Um, you can see that we it's had a post here on the server side. Um, let's go see how I did for um, looking at the data. So you can see here that there still is no daily summary. There is um, uh, a system, one system ID. It was created here. Look, it's the ninth. And this is in UTC. So this is the yesterday hack. Um, it's got content app information, workers, but most importantly here, Postgres is an entry because um, we're saving it even though the system has no version, it's just blank, which is the database representation for, we didn't get one. Um, and this is what old pre pulp core 3.22 systems will look like, and that's inspected. Um, so at this point, let's go add the implementation of pulp core. Do, do, do. There's pulp core. All right, so here's the telemetry um, part of Pulp Core. Somebody have a question? Uh, I was just going to say, next time you restart your dev environment, uh, don't use dash dash volume, and then bring it back up. I believe you won't have the certs regenerated then. Hey, I'm going to try that. Um, no. Cool. So actually, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so for pulp core, what we're going to do, um, well, a couple things I gotta, I gotta go copy the, um, proto buff definition into pulp core because, um, I, it needs to have the newer upgraded binding, uh, in order to use it. So here's my telemetry PB, um, and I'm going to go into pulp core in the app. There's the protobuf area. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to overwrite it because it's new. We don't think about it. Google handles it. It's in there. Um, then in the telemetry area, um, it's importing the new definition now. It's now got those like extra attributes in it. And what the telemetry stuff does here is it, just, it calls post telemetry. This is a task that runs every 24 hours. It's, it's um, an asynchronous task um, because if there is stuff that is like a little bit harder to collect, we don't want to run them serially. So we made this part of our code asynchronous. Um, it has each of the little parts for each of the little data structures that has to, has to grab. And it, it gathers those up into a, um, to, into a protobuf object. Um, and that's the protobuf object. And um, then it, it passes it around so that all these different things can add to it. And it calls those coroutines. And then it does the posting. And it uses the request library to post. And this is where you can see um, we're serializing it to a string. But this is actually a binary compact version. One of the things about protobuf that's really great is that this is a super compact definition. Um, not that there's a large payload in this case, it's not that big of a deal, but it's just a cool thing about protobuf in general. Um, one other just like neat thing about protobuf is um, you don't have to deserialize the entire message to read the parts that you want. And this is where the ordering of those, those numbers that we saw in the protobuf spec definition come into play. The lower the numbers, you know, you have to read them in order. So like I could literally just read the first part of a protobuf message, message, and that's it. If the thing I'm interested in is number one um, or number six, I can read the first six just to get to that. So it's super efficient in terms of its ability to read data. That's a really nice property um, about protobuf. So anyways, uh, it submits the data here. This is not important for what you're going to do, which is when you add these metrics. Um, so let's go look at close this window um the pulp core stuff so um for the pulp core stuff what we're going to do is we're going to add a new little entry here called 
you know, hey, let's 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 also call the PostgreSQL version. And here are two functions that I wrote um, to to do that. And we're going to look at them. Uh, so let's also import connection. So the way that this um, works is that at runtime, it queries the database connection. Um, and uh, using the Django DB, and it just asks the server for its version. So um, my code PostgreSQL version is calling PostgreSQL version here. Um, this says, um, this has to call sync to async. This is kind of complicated code routine stuff. It's not really the point, but it's important. It's necessary. Um, I have to have a helper function here which can do all of the database interaction inside of one synchronous function. This is not a coroutine. Um, if this doesn't make sense to you, it's a great reason to learn a little bit more about coroutines. And you can ask several people on the team if you want some help with that. Um, so the, the if and else logic stuff you see here is because Postgres is a built way that it reports versions to you is pretty insane to me. It's this really large integer that you have to interpret in these weird ways to get the major and minor versions. And it's also kind of silly that at Postgres 10, I mean, it's not silly, but um, I guess annoying maybe that they switched the way that their versioning scheme works. And so you actually have to have two implementations of it. This I didn't imagine would be part of my presentation, but for what it's worth, here it is. Um, you made me smile, it, Brian. <laughs> yeah. So um, if, uh, if it can't get the version for whatever reason, it comes back as zero. So this says I'm going to return none, which protobuf nicely collapses into the same case of you know pre 3.22 systems that don't even have an entry because it's an optional entry, so it shows up on the server as empty empty string anyway, which is which is its version of none. Um, so that's actually kind of nice. Uh, so anyways. Um, this is the version getting. It returns the major minor version as a string. It takes the telemetry protobuf Python binding and using the attribute, nice attribute based assignment here assigns it. And that gets included in the payload and submitted to the server side. So um, also my PR to bulk core includes a, um, a release note because it's important that we have clear transparency with our users. And it also includes this in the documented components section here um, in the example. So this is another thing to know. If you look at the docs and the architecture, there's this telemetry collection section where we point out that we do this and how people can turn it off. And I am adding it just to the little documentation example. Every time you change this, you need to come back here and show our users you know, an example of the whole payload. I'm not doing that in my PR. I'm doing it in my PR, but I'm not doing it in this little demo stuff for today. But this is the whole change for pulp core. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, so since that change is uh, all set, what we're going to do is try what Dennis um, told me to do, which is, so you say I just should just do a down and an up, Dennis. Actually, I need to do, I need to destroy the database because I need it to have a new system ID. So I'm going to do that. Okay, I got you. Um, and are you saying that maybe I should try it with up without the volumes? Well, the up, um, well, the down dash dash volumes deletes any volumes that Podman created for you. So the up yeah. is going to have to recreate them, and then the search yeah. will need to get recreated. Yep. Um, this is something that. You know, what I need is that, I mean, I don't, I want a new database. And so this is a way for me to do that. I guess I could be doing this in a better way, but for what it's worth, this is yeah, yeah. needing for me to do it. Um, so it's going to, it's going to post that to the telemetry site here. We're just going to let the telemetry site run um, while it's, it's receiving that. Um, we're in the meantime, going to go and um, compile the other spec. So remember, we we went and looked at um, we went and looked at the summary here. So we added the the little bit not great on my part 
PostgreSQL um, part of the um, of the summary. So we use protobuf on the summary too. And so I've extended it here. And now what we need to do is compile it. So let's do that. What's it called? Summary. OK. So now if you look um, in the analytics site, you'll see um, that there's like a bunch of in the summary PB that there's a bunch of diff here. So it generated new stuff for the summary. Uh, so what we need to do then is perform summarization. Um, the summarization stuff lives here. Uh, it's in the view. No, it's not in the view. It's in the summarized area. So Summarize is the command management command that gets called every 24 hours, pulp analytics, uh, pulp analytics management commands summarize.py, and it has this handle method. And it basically runs queries about the systems in the last 24 hours. It has this persistent minimum age thing that we talked about earlier. And then if there are systems to summarize, it calls these helper functions to perform summarization. Um, so let's look at the code I wrote for the sake of time, especially. So here's how summarization will happen. Um, so we're going to, in that handle method, say, hey, let's handle the PostgreSQL version stuff too. And um, here's a static method right above handle that will do that. Um, so what this is saying is, Uh, this is saying forward all the systems in the last 24 hours. That's as a query set. And here's my summary. This is a protobuf definition. Um, we're going to do some counting. This is the aggregating part. So for the system and all the systems, um, let's find its single PostgreSQL model and grab its version because there's a one. This is a one for one foreign key situation. So first is fine. Um, we're going to count it by version. So this dictionary is keyed on version, and it's incrementing. Because it's default dict with an int, it's going to default to 0, which is convenient. And then after we did all the counting, let's save that into, um, yeah, I did not copy this all correctly. Um, let's save that into the protobuf summary definition. So. Here's the protobuf summary definition. We're creating a message instance. This is the part that could be, that didn't have to be this way. It could have just been a single scalar value instead of this like sub message. But this is how you add a sub message, and that's what it is for now. So I'm adding the sub message. I'm putting the version and the count into the sub message, and I'm doing that for all um, version. And is this getting saved somewhere? Yeah. So this is just adding it to the summary protobuf definition, and uh -huh. then. Um, which kind of everything adds it and saves it, or everything adds it into that summary. And that summary gets saved here as part of the daily summary object. Mm. Is that fancy okay. protobuf field that the very excellent Matthias made. Cool. So the um, summary passed into all of these methods and then it, saved yeah. at the end. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So, so that's how summarization happens. Um, Let's go look at. Uh, let's go look through this code to see if there's anything I, I missed. We talked about the settings change. We added it to the admin site. We do the summarized stuff. We made the migration. We added the model. We rebuilt both of the bindings. This is all the visualization stuff we'll do in a minute. And then um, this is all, this is some of this is visualization stuff. And these are the two extensions for the protobuf definition. So uh, I think we're good. Um, look, I see another post here. Look, I can see um, this pulp core system now, including PostgreSQL version 13.7, which is what my dev environment runs in the definition. And if I go here, I can see that there are now two entries. This is the one from the old system that didn't know about it. This is the new system 13.7. I have two systems here. I have no daily summaries. Let's go make a summary. 
Um, so I'm going to just stop my web server here. Uh, I'm going to call summarize, um, which is the management command that does this. Uh, mm, that's interesting that it gave me two. I expected one. Maybe it crossed. Did I cross? That's weird. Um, anyways, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so let's go look at the summaries now. Oh, wait, got to run the web server. Um, I have two summaries. Um, this, I don't know why I made that other one, but um, it made this one, which you can see, this is like the protobuf representation as a, as a user visible string, not the binary pack format. And the important part here is that you can see that there are, um, there's this PostgreSQL version, version is empty. There's one of those, 13.7, one of those. So um, at this point, I don't want this one here anymore. Uh, so I'm gonna delete it. So we have exactly one summary and it's got some stuff in there. Now, the thing is that's not a really useful, um, that's not really useful data for visualizing purposes, which we'll do here in a moment and then we'll be done. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the shell um, and I'm going to run this uh, script I have here, which basically says, find me that sum daily summary. Here's a bunch of versions, update, you know, add these versions into that summary and then save it again. And so now if I run the web server once more and I go back and I look, there's like a bunch of interesting versions here. And this is what it will look like in, in practice a lot more. So let's go on to the charting and visualization. Um, for the charting, so the charting works like this. Um, charting is, um, it has two parts. Uh, there's the get on the view what am I doing? Um, so here's, this is the post, this is where we receive the data. And then the other big one here is get, this is what visualizes the data. This is the page that you see on the homepage. Um, and it reads, primarily it reads daily summary objects and builds data in these variables and then hands them to this template called, you know, this index.html template. And that template is, uh, templates, the template is here. So let's go put um, some data in the template. Um, so this is JavaScript. Um, this is what is driving the chart.js library. And let's go look at that. So here's our, um, here's a pie chart. You should look in the chart.js docs about it. Um, We'll put it here. So what this is saying, well, one more thing. So here's the, can, the HTML canvas entry in the DOM that um, will place, will give the JavaScript something to interact with. Um, and so uh, the way this works, if you don't know that much about HTML JavaScript stuff is um, these are HTML elements that are then um, they're placed in the document object model and then the JavaScript can get that element by its ID. And now it has a reference to it and it can do JavaScripty things to drive and influence that. So in this case, we're gonna make a new chart, which is a chart.js chart and it's a pie chart. And this is the way you drive chart.js. You say, here's my data. And then we're gonna give it just a little title to the chart. Um, but the, this is the this is the important part. Well, one, I had to drive. I had to pick a bunch of colors here. That seemed unnecessary. I filed a bug to the, uh, against them about that. Um, but this is the important part. So the data comes in as this, which is a list of numbers, and the data comes in here, or the labels come in here, which is um, a list of strings. These are the version numbers. So what we need to do is um, go to this view code and have the view code read the daily summary, the most recent one, because we're not doing time series, 
and just format the data here, and then we'll be done. Uh, so that happens. I guess I should use this. Um, so we already made some edits in this file. So like, here's the saving because the saving also happens here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to add these to the to the context which is being sent in. So this is the context which gets rendered, which helps render the template in Django. So we're going to say here are two variables. Um, they're default to empty. This is really nice in case like we just don't have any data for this yet. Um, we're going to call the helper function. So that happens here. Um, we're going to be providing this new function. It's going to add data into the context, and it's going to operate on the most recent daily summary, which is what's being gotten from that query set. And then this is adding the PostgreSQL um, method. So this is the new method that we're calling. And what it's doing is, is this is the context that you saw. We're going to be kind of looking into it, into these keys, and we're just going to be appending the data that we see um, it's looking at the daily summary object. This is the summary field is the protobuf definition. And this is the PostgreSQL version. Um, in the protobuf definition, this is, this is that message, which itself has two, um, attributes on it. Uh, it has an attribute for version and it has an attribute for count. This, I wanted it to show as none. In fact, this is the part that I didn't do. D -E -F -I -N -E -D -D -E -F -I, -N -E -D I can't spell. Um, so protobuf has a none being this. I want the graph to show it like this. So I'm kind of just changing what the string representation is of none here. Um, but it's basically taking the version and the counts and appending them here. And the order matters here. So like one version, one count, one version, one count, one version, one count. And this is how the charting library knows to pair them. Uh, and with that, we should be done. Uh, let's go make sure this is fully restarted. Okay, we're good. Let's go look at uh, the site. Hey, look, it's a pie chart. Um, you can see the labels are correct. The pie chart is here. And uh, if I view the source, you can see what this looks like uh, as that code chooses how to take it out of daily summary and present it into the charting library. And that is um, how you add an end-to-end -end metric um, with telemetry. All right. Um, I think we can stop the recording unless there are any questions. It's like a huge bonkers amount of information. So uh, I think it over. Do we have any questions for Brian, folks? Did you think you were going to be doing your demo this morning? No. <laughs> um, no, I didn't. Um, uh, because there were these problems that only really affect the dev site when you don't have any data in it already or a, a local development environment. And so um, I filed these bugs and I kind of like sent them to Matthias um, feeling frustrated last night. And I woke up and he's like, hey, I fixed it. And I ran it and it worked. That's great. That's uh, outstanding. Outstanding. Matthias, Matthias said he couldn't be here. But um, again, I really can't highlight his work enough. Um, he's done a phenomenal job at helping to make this great. So wherever you are, Matthias, thank you. Absolutely. Other questions, gang? See some shaking heads. All right, I'm going to stop the recording.